Big data has transformed the economy we live in. Over the last few decades, it's become far cheaper to collect and store, and much more valuable to own and use. It's now overtaken oil to become the most valuable resource in the world. It can all sound bewildering, but data is really just measurements and recordings, facts about the world. That could be an airplane measuring the temperature of its engines, or scientists measuring an earthquake. But some of this data is called personal data, and it's about you. If you were to print out all the data that's being created about you today, it would probably be thousands of pages long. But what is it, and why does it exist? All your personal data basically falls into three broad types. First is the data you give to companies yourself. Your address to a takeaway company. Credit card details to Amazon. Your name and age to Netflix. You know about all this already. Less visible to you is the second category. Data generated about you by the apps, platforms, services and websites that you use. Uber will collect thousands of GPS coordinates from your phone whilst you have their app open. Amazon will time how long your Kindle reading sessions are and every search you make on their site. Websites will drop small files called cookies onto your computer to keep track of what you browse and how long for. Most mysterious is the third category, data about you that has been generated from other data about you. Companies might have tried to predict what type of clothes you like, where and when you go on holidays. They might have given you a green score or indulgent rank these are real examples. Perhaps they've used data to put you in a category called something like love aspirer, idea seeker, or young and struggling. This is called inferred data, and you've probably never come across it before. All this data exists for lots of different reasons. The services you use need data to work properly. A website needs to know what kind of computer you have. Uber needs to know where you are. But personal data can also be profitable. It's used by insurance companies to guess how healthy you are, and by banks to see if you're a risky person to lend money to. One of its biggest uses is for targeted advertising. Different parts of your personal data, social media, browsing, consumer history, can be joined up to give advertisers a sense of your interests, what you want, and whether you can afford it. Targeted advertising means we don't have to pay for services like Gmail or Instagram, but it also raises a number of ethical questions which continue to be debated today. Personal data can tell a lot more about you than many expect. In a famous case, a US supermarket used data to know a shopper was pregnant before her own father. But on the other hand, data about you might be completely wrong, unfairly flagging you as a lending risk, for instance, stopping you ever getting a loan to buy a car. It's also extremely difficult to know what data is generated about you, what it's based on and how it changes hands. Personal data is joined up, bought, sold and packaged by an industry of brokers, enrichers and compilers that have remained largely unknown to the people whose data they trade. This means that we often have very little control over what data is collected and what happens to it after that. Have you ever clicked that giant green button to accept all the cookies on the browser? Of course you have, it's easier. But have you ever read the full terms and conditions in that tiny print that tells you what happens with your data? Of course not. The good news is that a law called the General Data Protection Regulation now gives you more rights to know how your data is being used and why. Data rights are human rights. And like the uses of data itself, this shouldn't be mysterious to anyone.